All right, I want to show uh, looking at a circuit with different probes and, and uh, knowing what's right and knowing what's wrong. Um, sometimes the scope kind of lies to you if you're not quite careful. So um, I'm going to be using this board here. It's just a, a, a little RF generator. And I have the output. It's got, it's got a dual output. It has a, 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 a regular phase and a 180 degree phase and it has two, two outputs. I have one output terminated and I have one output going into the scope. And I have the so scope set up to be 50 ohms input. And so uh, it's outputting this nice, it's outputting this nice square wave. If, uh, if I change the frequency, you can see it gets, uh, gets smaller and bigger. Okay, and we're running at uh, 300 megahertz right now. This is 300 megahertz, right? So uh, the first um, probe I'm going to be looking at is with the uh, with an uh, active probe, an FET probe, and the second probe I'm going to be using is the one gigahertz probe, and then I'm going to use the 500 megahertz standard probe. All right. So let's go over here. And let me probe the circuit with the uh, with the active probe, and you can see that we're getting a pretty good representation of the waveform with the active probe. All right. Now I want to point out one thing here. Can I put this all on one screen? I doubt it. Maybe just barely. Okay. So uh, with the active probe, if I probe the signal itself, you can. See Oops. signal itself, you can see that they're out of phase. And when I do the opposite phase one, they're in phase. And that's because the active probe itself does a 180 degree phase change. Um, it's, it's an inverting, it's an inverting probe. So you have to be, you have to be aware of that. All right. Okay. So let me grab the one gigahertz probe here. And if I put the one gigahertz probe on the signal, you can see that they are in phase like a probe should be, right? And if I put it on the other one, they are 180 degrees out of phase as they should be. So you can see the one gigahertz probe is also doing pretty good job. It's maybe putting a little bit of distortion into, the, into that, loading that one down just a tiny bit. But the one that's completely separate, you can see that it's a, it's doing, forget about the amplitude, but it's putting out a pretty nice, pretty nice square wave also. And then let me grab the uh, let me grab the uh, regular probe here, and I'll put that on the uh, inverting one. And you can see that it's just a sine wave. Okay, we're just getting a sine wave out, and that's because we have uh, our scope probe is too slow. Right, it's a 500 megahertz scope probe, and we have a 300 megahertz signal. You can wait a minute, 300. That's just fine for that probe. No, it's not really. Um, you have to be at least. Uh, kind of Nyquist behind it. So let's go to 100 megahertz. Change the scale here. So this is a 100 megahertz uh, signal now. And if I probe that one with the uh, with a normal probe, you can see that it's trying to catch up, but it's not quite there yet. All right. If we go to the one gigahertz probe, uh, you can see that it's also kind of funniness. Here's the uh, Here's the actual signal. It's not too bad on that one. There's some phase change as well. So yeah, that's kind of strange, huh? I don't know why this one is so wonky over, over here. But if it's nice and loaded with the scope and everything, I guess it gives you a nicer square wave. And then if we use the uh, active probe, uh, things are looking I think kind of look wonky over here too. That's interesting. I guess it's that output. So let's just use the output itself. So we're gonna we're gonna be look using the uh, probes to look at the signal that's actually going out to the oscilloscope. So yeah, that one looks pretty good. Remember this one's 180 degrees phase. It's looking pretty good with that one, the active probe. Let's put the uh, one gigahertz probe on it. It's starting to get roundy a little bit. And then if we use the normal probe. Uh, yeah, it's looking quite wonky. So anyway, uh, you would think at 100 megahertz, the uh, 500 megahertz probe would be working just fine, but that's not always the case. Um, depends on your loading, on your impedance, on a bunch of other things. One of the uh, benefits of using these uh, these active probes 
is that you can get a really good representation of what's going on because you're not loading down that circuit at all. And it's a one gigahertz probe, so it's able to catch up and we're doing a much, a much better job with the, uh, with the active probe. 